Season 7 Episode 1 of Stars' as Outlander picks off just where Season 6 left off, with Claire, Katrina Belf, being hanged as a murderer. This comes after a year-long droughtlander. Of course, in reality, nothing like that takes place. Since being separated from his soulmate, Jamie's, Sam Hewen, every waking moment has been plagued by this image. Jamie has an unshakable conviction that he will eventually locate Claire, who he believes is still alive. The tenacious Scott will stop at nothing to reunite with the lost piece of his heart, and young Ian, John Bell, will be right by his side every step of the way. Given that she is now being held in a Wilmington prison, Claire is very much alive and doing okay. Margaret Tolliver, Liza Sadovy, runs the prison and establishes its ground rules. With the money Tom Christie gave Claire, she was able to buy some more supplies. Sadie Ferguson, Sarah Finnegan, Claire's new cellmate, reveals that the justices have been hiding for months, thus there have been no trials. Sadie cautions Claire to be on the lookout, saying that even though she hasn't been formally convicted, a mob may still come for her. Obviously, Claire isn't allowed to reveal that the courts would be closed for a long time due to the conflict. However, she can't stop thinking about it. The troops come in the morning to get the healer, but they have no idea who they are searching for or what she is accused of. Sadie goes up after Claire identifies herself as the healer and says she is the one who is being charged with murder, calling Claire a forger. Claire has already been stolen when Jamie and Ian arrive in town. Mark Lewis Jones' Tom Christie has no clue where they took her, but Sadie would tell him for a fee. Another inmate clarifies that while murders cannot be forgiven, forgers do not face the death penalty. Sadie claims that all she wanted to do was lend a hand. Mrs. Tolliver admits that her husband ordered her to execute her husband's duty to the Crown by taking Claire. She had no idea why he was headed to Fort Johnston, only that he was. Actually, Claire has been transferred aboard a ship in order to serve as a substitute for a surgeon assigned to treat the injured at Fort Johnston. Elizabeth Martin, Rianne Farley, the governor's wife, is pregnant and complaining about her husband being hounded by the people of his own state. Claire is quite nice to Elizabeth at first, but when Elizabeth finds out that Claire is suspected of killing her husband's pregnant mistress, she gets very worried. Apparently, Claire is widely infamous, and her story is well known. Before she agrees to help, Elizabeth insists on a solemn oath that the woman won't harm the baby. Elizabeth says she would sooner die than have another miscarriage. Of her six pregnancies, three have ended in miscarriage. Mrs. Martin is blown away by Claire's kindness and appreciation for her care. She says she won't tell anyone about the murder charge. When Claire, Eugene O'Hare, overhears Governor Martin, also O'Hare, talking about where they're going, she begs to be allowed to go ashore and stock up on provisions. Instead, he advises she write a list of things to get and refuses to let her leave the house without it. Major Donald MacDonald, Robin Lang, joins them at this time to report the collapse of Fort Johnston. MacDonald tells Governor Martin about what happened with Claire, including the fact that Jamie resigned as Indian agent. Martin also finds out that Claire has been charged with murder. She claims she did all in her ability to protect the unborn child's life and is completely innocent. She understands his pain and is willing to do the same for him and his wife. Clever Claire sends her supply request to New Jersey Governor Tom Christie instead of the governor. She treats a patient aboard the HMS cruiser, as she describes in her letter. The letter states that Christie will meet the governor's men in the harbor, and they will transport the supplies to the ship. Oil of porcupine, camphor, potassium nitrate, and vermeus are all in the list of necessities. Christie infers that the inclusion of vermeus means she wants him to locate Jamie. Christie complies with the request and hands Jamie the message. Claire is out on the deck as Jamie's rowboat pulls up. As soon as he boards, Jamie runs up to greet Governor Martin with an embrace and a passionate kiss before requesting a meeting. After reminding Martin that he has complete authority over the detainees now that martial rule has been established, Jamie asks for Claire's release. Governor Martin still isn't satisfied, so he offers a compromise. Claire will be released if Jamie can muster 200 men and promise to fight beside Major MacDonald. She will stay in his custody until Jamie complies with his demands. Jamie appears to accept the idea, but then secretly tells Claire he has to leave early for work. When Jamie gets back to Wilmington, he tells Ian he has no plans to start recruiting new members. But he is going back to the ship to release Claire no matter what it takes. Tom, slightly inebriated, approaches Jamie and Ian for assistance. Tom claims he killed Malva in order to convince Jamie to let him travel to the ship and release Claire. To save Claire, Jamie lets Tom step in and sacrifices his pride. Tom has no idea what the future holds, and he often thinks about what Jamie will say at his death. 
Asked to comment on Thomas Christie, Jamie said, I would say that he was an honorable Scot, a leader of men in his own way, though he didn't kin quite where to lead them. In a light-hearted tone, Jamie continues, stubborn as a damn mule, but despite our differences, a man I respected and whose respect I hope I had in return. When Tom Christie pulls up in his rowboat, he finds Claire back on the deck. In their private conversation, Tom admits that he has come to confess to Malva's murder. When Claire expresses her perplexity, Tom explains to her that he believes Malva and her mother to be witches since they are the daughter of his brother. Since his brother's wife was a skilled seductress, he doesn't hold it against him that he fell for her. In the end, she was executed for the murder of his brother by her husband. After adopting Malva, Tom brought her up alongside his own son, Alan. Tom is convinced that Malva, like her mother before her, was a witch since she admitted to trying to murder him and Claire. Claire, seeing that Malva was also responsible for the love charm, finds this to be credible. Malva was willing to murder for Jamie. Even though Claire believes him, she still doesn't think he actually murdered Malva. Tom delivers Claire his written confession to the murder of Malva and tells her that he loves her. He already gave a copy to the newspaper in Wilmington, so he can't go back now. He has spent his entire life loving unworthy people and now he begs her to let him die for the sake of one who is. While pacing along the coast, Jamie finally discovers Claire's rowboat emerging from the mist. Later, while still dressed, she asks him if he forced Tom to admit guilt. After hearing Jamie's explanation, Tom is certain that he did not kill Malva. Claire is upset that Tom lied to rescue her, and Jamie assures her that he would have done the same. Jamie sneaks out of bed when Claire is asleep and enters Richard Brown's quarters. He saw Brown's horse outside tied up and has been waiting for him inside. Chris Larkin's character, Brown, gives Jamie a drink after discovering that he isn't aboard a ship headed towards Scotland. Jamie asks Brown to hold off until he's finished, but Brown tells him not to touch his hair. Jamie is calm and direct as he reassures Brown that Ian and the Cherokee have dealt with Brown's men. Brown tries to appeal to Jamie's better nature by praising him as a decent and upright guy. Jamie stares at Brown and tells him that he, too, is a violent guy. Brown made an attempt to steal away the source of his goodness, Claire, from him. As the first episode fades to black, Jamie advises that Brown make peace with the Lord and then draws the two men closer together. Roger meets an unexpected fellow traveler. Roger, Richard Rankin, and Brianna, Sophie Skelton, are getting ready for Roger's new post as a minister to soldiers as Season 7 picks up with them. Although Reverend Macmillan will test Roger's mettle, he believes he is strong enough to manage the situation. Roger is cautioned by Reverend Macmillan, Ian McRae, not to pass judgment on the motives of the troops. Everyone, no matter who they vote for, will need prayer. Roger and Macmillan are mocked by the chained inmates, who declare they offer nothing of value. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, and surely God will go with thee, Roger retorts in the vein of Muhammad Ali. Incredulous by the man's remark of Ali, Roger immediately strikes up a discussion with the total stranger. In the 11th and 12th episodes of season 5, Wendy Godonner formally identifies himself and solicits aid. The name rings a bell with Roger because Claire mentioned him as one of Lionel Brown's men during their kidnapping and torture of Claire. Season 7 Premiere of Outlander Richard Rankin in the premiere of Outlander Season 7, Image, stars. Wendigo, Brennan Martin, claims he has never touched Claire and has no intention of harming her in the future. He's been drafted to battle because he stole a gem, the gem he needs to get home. To aid the Indian nations, Wendigo and five other Native Americans set out through the stones, but they were separated. Never did arrive at his destination. Wendigo pleads for assistance, and Roger gathers supplies that may aid his escape. When Bree finds out what Roger is doing, she is startled and puzzled as to how he believes he can break free a prisoner. You're not Steve McQueen in The Great Escape, exclaims Bree. Wendigo didn't harm Claire, as both Roger and Bree agree, but Bree points out that the time traveler didn't aid her mother, either. Roger is sympathetic to her plight, but believes Wendigo is simply frightened and anxious to get home. In his mind, nothing is more important than reuniting with her after his time spent with Stephen Bonnet's gang. Wendigo followed the same route. Later, Roger tries to make amends by assuring Bree that he did not aid Wendigo's escape. But he should trust his gut and try to help the man by praying for him rather than letting him go free.